Hello everyone, I am Bradley Swart, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. In this video today, we're going to look at GameMaker Studio version 2 point something. We're going to use the drag and drop interface and we're just going to get acclimated with creating sprites and animations and things like that. Nothing too special. And you're going to get to see my, my brilliant artwork in full display here. So. Uh, these are the things we're going to do. This is a homework assignment for my general class, but those of you who are not in my class, you get the bonus of just kind of fitting in here and, and coming along for the ride. Okay, so I'm just going to create a bunch of sprites, and eventually I'm going to put them into a room and run them. Let's let's just start out with the, the easy one here, square box sprite. Okay, I'm going to go in over here. Oops, create new sprite. Call it square box SPR. And remember again, whenever you're adding any asset to GameMaker Studio, it has to have a unique name and it can't be a function name or anything else that is already being used. So you just have to watch out for that kind of stuff. And so uh, to make it 65 by 65, I have to go in here. I can change it since I haven't done anything to it. I can change it in the scale image or the resize uh, canvas. Part of this it doesn't much matter at this point and there's my 65 by 65 I can edit this um, let me see what I can do shoot if can I make this a little smaller here so I can make that bigger because it, it gets a little tricky sometimes especially with this editor here okay so let's see I want a blue box with a red border so I can do something like this there's my red border and then a blue fill and there's that and the entire use the entire bounds of the image to create create the square so I've, I'm that's all I needed to do for this one I and it, say, it says to use the the origin point of zero zero unless otherwise unless otherwise noticed so I'm good there so that one's done We're ready to move on to offset circle sprite so I will create this guy let's say oops not as responsive as I would hope okay offset circle sprite and this needs to be 83 by 83. I'll just use the other one here. This one you only have to change it once since this thing is clicked by default to maintain aspect ratio. So there's an 83 by 83 image. I can go in here and I can say I want a yellow border for a circle. And okay, there, and it's not going to be perfect. And that's just because of the, the way circles are drawn, rendered to uh, uh, rasterize to the screen. And so then I want to put it, you know, fill it in with gr some kind of green. Yeah, that's an ugly. Something like that. And that looks pretty good. I mean, I'm not, you know, again, I would, if I was doing this, I'd probably fill in the little extra dots, but I'm okay for now. But then the last step here is the origin of the sprite is going to be 11 by 23. So I have to just go in here and offset it. And there's no reason to do this other than just to just for you to get used to and understanding that sometimes you're going to want to change the origin of the sprite and then collision mask. So again, it's just to get you used to the different editors. Okay, so let's see. Incorrect square here. So let's see what this fully says. A white with a gray border. So let's just start. Let me create that here. Sprite, a new sprite. I can call this thing incorrect square SPR. Okay, this thing needs to be 100 by 100. So there it is, there's my 100 by 100. And then I'm going to go ahead and say it's a gray, this is a gray border of some kind. So I'm going to go, oops, don't I have it going? Oh, gray on gray is hard to see in Game Maker. At least with this here, this tool. So maybe I should have done the white first, right? So you could see it. See if I did a decent job. Well, no, let me fix it up just one second here, just so I can feel better about life. Add the second line here. There I go. I feel better about life now. So I say 100 by 100 square. That's white with a gray border. Once created, use the rotate tool brush or whatever, and and any other tools required to rotate it 45 degrees. So I usually use Control A to to select the the whole image. The rotate tool is right here, rotate brush tool. And then you can go up, uh, oh, I thought you could go up. Hold on here, let's see. 
yeah, up over here, rotation, I want this thing to be rotated 45 degrees, and it'll do it for me. And then I can go ahead, it's a brush now, so that means it's, you know, it's not necessarily in my, oops, let me put it back to 45. It's not necessarily something I can place just yet in my room, but I can go back to my brush editor. Where, where's my, where did it go? I thought I said it. Um, okay. Well, anyway, whoops. <laughs> eh, game Maker's fun. And then I don't know what's happening. Hold on one second here. I can use the rotate tool, rotate the whole image. 45 degrees again. The part of it is I don't use, you know, we don't, I don't, we don't use this, these things all the time, but when you do, you definitely need, definitely need to understand what's happening. And usually in class, you guys show me better ways to do things in the, for anyways, because you guys have used Photoshop and all those tools more than I ever have. All right, so a little tinkering here. You have to set the brush, and then, and then you actually have to use white because it was trying to change. It was trying to tint this thing into gray, and then you just click in here. I just went. To, you go to fifty fifty, and you click. And the whole point of this is just to show you that, you know, you can't rotate a square into the same space. And you know, you can notice here that it's a little, it's a little off because it needs more than one hundred by one hundred once you rotate the thing. And so that was, that's, and it's, it should look cut off since rotation doesn't change the bounding box as you're doing it. So now I'm trying to do the same thing with a correct square. And so what does it say to do? It says take the image, okay, go in, let's create the correct square. Every time I click, click square, correct square sprite. Now it says it's a put it in a hundred by hundred square. Okay, so just do the same thing here. Let me just do it. Let's do it for repetition's sake, right here. One hundred by one hundred. Edit the image, and then just do gray. Uh, gray. Or let me do the white this time, just so I can see it better. And then the gray, the gray fill. All right, so basically, have maybe the tinting or the, the gray is a little different color, but I don't necessarily care for this example. And now it says, before I do anything else, resize it to 142 by 142. So I got to go back into this image, the correct one, and I can go here and I can resize it centered to 142 by 142. And now you can see now there's extra space here. It's all clear space. And now I can go in, oops, I, off by one here every time. And now I can go in and do the same thing as I did before, Alt-A, or Control-A, sorry. And then I can go ahead and do the Rotate tool, 45 degrees. And then, you know, so there's that. So I have that working for me. And now I can go in and just basically clear out the whole thing. And fill in with the new brush tool at 50/50 using. Uh, I got to use white as the front color again. And you, now you notice that everything works. And this will be 71, 71 instead because it's half of half, or 70, 70, something like that. Um, there we go. And now you can see everything is the way it's supposed to be. It doesn't say anything about. No, it doesn't say anything about doing anything else to it. And the reason why one it's like why 142 and 142 it has to do with the square root of 2. The square root of 2 is 1.414 and so that times 100 is 141.4 and that adds rounds up to 142. It just simple trigonometric and hypotenuse and uh, Sokotoa kind of stuff here. Okay, so that handles the correct square and now we're kind of ready to move on to bigger and better things. Okay, so the next one says my awesome shrinked sprite import any graphic and what I did is ju I just found this graphic on the internet because that pretty much sums up my art skills even after 10 years or 20 depending on you know 40 depending on what you think of me and so I just found this image I imported it you just go out and find it and here I go and then it says okay so now we're gonna take this and reduce it from the the, the full to to basically nothing in four frames and what's frustrating about this is GameMaker 1, a couple, three, four years ago now, however many years ago GameMaker 1 was, 
had this really cool tool, it would do it for you and it would take half a second for you to tell it, click, 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 and it would do it for you. But now it doesn't do any of that for you. You have to do this manually. So it's frustrating, but let's see about getting this thing to, to once we do it once or twice, it should be very easy to do it forevermore. Okay, so this is going to be some tedious work as opposed to the couple seconds it used to take. If you find a better way or know a better way, please comment below. I'd love to learn, especially when it comes to art, since I'm as bad as it gets. So anyway, so what I did was I set up, I, I have my one sprite here, and then I copied it, I duplicated it three times over, and each time I went in, and all I did was go down to here, and I just rescaled the image. So this one is 4, 480 by 480, this one is 240 by 240, and this one I made it 20 by 20, just as small as you can get. And so now what I did was I just go in here to the, you know, the, like this one, the 480 by 480. I edit the image. I went, I control A, control C. So I, get, I copy this into a brush. And then I go into here and I can edit my image. And what I did was I duplicate this guy, control C, control V. I go in here. I use the tool to delete everything. And then I use that brush and I go in. And let's see, seven, like 480 by or 360, or what is this thing? 360 by 360, something like that. Try to figure out, just use 360 by 360 for all of this. And now I click, and now the thing is there. And now I can see if I run this, you can see that. Doo -doo, oh, sorry, watch your eyes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, but you can see that it's starting to shrink. And now I just have to do that a few times over. So I take the 240 by 240 copy that I go over to the uh, sh the my the actual shrink sprite edit that control paste go in here to lips delete the whole thing and now go in here 360 by 360 again or very close to it and now I have frame three come on come on come on there we go and then I do the last one where I go in and borrow this guy go back in here and then do this one more time where I just control C control V and then I delete everything and delete and then add the final tiny little guy at 360 and there I go and now when I come back here instead of running this so fast that your eyes bleed I'll run this a little slower five frames per second and now when I run this here you can see and there I go that is a four frame drop from all to nothing for a specific image I told you about my artwork so for the next one stick figure animation I resize I created stick figure animation sprite I resize this to 64 by 96 there is my guy and I'm just gonna take this and copy paste this a few times over and I'm just gonna go ahead and modify the legs slightly and again, those of you with art skills do things better than what I'm doing. This is just because I am horrendous at art. I, my creativity comes, uh, I'd like to think, in different ways. So I say here is something that's slightly different for legs. And then I can come into this one and change it up just the same way and just change it back a little bit. And then we're going to be so proud of my artwork. One time I did this and I had like a little hula hoop. It was my, the greatest thing I'd ever done in thinking about what you see here that, that says something. And that hula hoop guy was amazing. But uh, here we go. We'll just <laughs> leave it like that. And I'll go back in now. Let's take a look. If I run this at maybe 10 frames per second, let's see what he looks like here. Let me, let me bring this in a little bit so we can see this. You go, there we go. He's doing the jig. I could add a hula hoop, and it would look like he's just hula hooping, right? But at least I tried, right? But that was me just spending about one minute's worth of effort. I would like for you, you know, like if I were doing this professionally, I would at least try it a little bit harder, or better yet, hire someone with better art skills to do the work or get someone to do it and help us out. Okay, so that is what I wanted to do. Oh, and, and then I wanted to add uh, to this thing. Let me pause this guy now and go in to edit the image just so you could see the numbers. Just to, and, and you could use the text tool or you could just draw the numbers in for the, for the animation frames when it runs just to see it on the screen. One, zero, one, and two. And there we go. And... Oh, there we go. 
Oh, Z, oh, oh, I did it. Oh, shoot. I had it clicked on the wrong one. One, two. This one's a three. Let me see if I can un... Oops. Oh, shoot. I'll do it real quick, I promise here. This is zero. This is one. This is two. And then this is three. And you usually want to have the, the state that's the idle state as the first animation frame because usually you, you go back to zero and then if, he's, if it, you know, a person doesn't normally look like they're just like uh, arched over and you know, hiding behind a tree when they're normally just standing in place. So, okay, so that covers that guy and now we're ready to move on. Okay, for awesome background back. Oop, I guess I should call it awesome background back for background. You don't necessarily... Sometimes I like to do that. You can a sprite's a sprite. Again, I'm I'm re now I can delete all these extra things here. And the reason why I put the underscore SPR or underscore back behind all of these things again comes back to the fact that every resource in Game Maker when I add it to my tree here has to have a unique name. So if I create an object later and it has the same name, Game Maker is gonna throw up and say, Nope, not gonna happen. So coming back here, my awesome background back. I just pulled down, I just looked up 720p images and I found this colorful one. I think it's kind of beautiful. We'll have all the characters and all the creatures in here soon. And so very simple, just find a 720p resolution image and jam it in. Or take something and reduce it or, or scale it up to 720p. Okay, so that covers that. So the, fi the final one here is using and figuring out a tile set so we can use that for a background. Okay, so the final one here, finally done back for background. We're going to use this as a tile set. I just looked up online, and again, it says to make sure you use something that's at least 32 by 32, and I did here. This is, I zoomed in. It's, it's not, uh, oops, where is it here? This is it at full size. So it's going to be 32 by 32, I believe, when I go to do this. And so, and I'm pretty sure about it. I did do a check here. And so now we go tile set. I can go create a tile set using, so you have to create, put the image in and then you set up a tile set as a separate thing. And so I can say, oh, what sprite do I want to use? I want to use that finely done background. Oops, let me, and then, yeah, let me move this over a little bit since we don't, we're pretty much getting done with it. Let me zoom in a little bit more. And notice how 16 by 16, do you want to go in for every image and, and click it four times? No, I want to make this 32 by 32 so that everything is happy. And everybody, you can see that the white lines surround everything the way they're supposed to. Now, one thing to note is that you're supposed to put the clear image as the first one. And that's just because that's just the way Game Maker works. So everything this would have probably have to be moved somewhere else but I don't necessarily care for right now I just wanted to show you how this all works and a lot of times you will find tile sets that are uh, <laughs> that are not as uh, nicely separated it, you know especially the like the sprites for like ca game characters your Mega Man's and your Metroids and your you know near this and near that that they, they never seem to put things on the boundaries so you almost spend more time, like they, you spend more time copy pasting and moving the things around inside the editor than you should ever have to do because that person, as nice as it was, if they got you the images, they could have, uh, in the same amount of time, made it easier on your end. But then, eh, whatever, they're they are who they are. They're doing their best for you guys. Okay, <clears throat> so is that all I need to do? Let's see. Place it. Uh, place okay oh okay no, that's this part import the is a tile set and adjusts everything so your tile set and offsets are correctly bound so that is where i'm at and i'm ready to finish the deal here all right so let's do exactly that a single room comes for free room one that always comes for free so it says okay go down here into the room properties and change this to be 1280 by 720 so the room itself is now 720p just like everything else that we've been setting up. And you notice these grid settings. For now, it really doesn't much matter, but you can change them up here, and you're going to need to, depending on how, you, you know, the whole point of this is to place your objects in your room nicer than just click and having to be pixel perfect. So the grid is there to help. You don't always have to use it. And you can change the values around, and you can just kind of turn it on and off. And when you turn it off, you're turning it literally off. Like you can, and you can tinker around with what color the grid is and things like that. Well, okay, so I want to place the background image in the room. Like you could place, you could place that background image at, as an object and place it in the room, or you can just go ahead over to 
uh, let me see, the room settings here, let me see, background, and say I want to use that awesome background as the background. And so now when I run this, that's all you'll see. Because that's my whole, you know, the what you see, what you, what you get editor is showing you everything. And here is, my, here is my game, here is my thing. And so now it says I've done that. And it says, okay, for all the others, the other things, I think there's six of them. I'm going off what I read here. Pl create six objects and place them in the room so they're all visible. Give the stick figure a horizontal speed. And then use the tiles, the, set up a tile layer in here to fix up and, and place the tiles in here and then run the program and you're done. And so, okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I don't need this so much anymore. So let me just go ahead and start creating objects. I'm just gonna create an object. And then I'm gonna just, just to get these things in here, I'm gonna duplicate, Control D, Control D, D, oops, oh boy. <laughs> That's not what I thought would happen. Control D, Control D, nope, what the world, Control D, Control D, Control D. Nope, I don't know what is going. Uh, what is? I don't know why it's not so easy to do this. Okay, there we go. So let's see. Just kind of going off here. I'm just going to call this box. I'm going to call this circle. I'm going to call this incorrect. I'm going to call this correct. I'm just going through and trying to remember the things we've done. Notice that it alphabetizes everything. I don't know if there's a way to turn that off. Maybe in the settings or something, um, because it is sometimes it does get annoying. But let's just set up those four things first, and then see what happens. So let's go into our objects and say, okay, my box is going to use my um, find square box here. That's that's the first thing we set up. Don't play with you. Don't have to play with anything else. The circle just needs to have the uh, offset circle in there. The correct square needs to have oops, not the events, the, the sprite here needs to have the correct, the incorrect needs to have the incorrect. Okay, and just for the sake of this, we can just, let's just go back to the room, and we can now go in and just put these four things in, and then you, you click on the object, you hold down Alt, oops, you have, to be in the inst you have to be in the instances layer over here, there's a bit, because we did click earlier, you have to make sure you put objects in the instance layer, tiles in the tile layer, and then other things in the, the room background layer. Okay, so okay, so now I can hold click on the object, hold down Alt, and then I can add the objects to my scene. I can put many of them in here. I'm not gonna I'm not looking for anything special. I'm just putting circles, I'm putting the incorrects and the corrects in here. Look at that, look how fancy that all looks. And now if I run this again, you'll see it'll look exactly like it does there, but now it our program is actually executing, and there you go on that. So let's see, what else is there? I've got my background correct and then find, um, incorrect, my shrinked sprite and my stick figure. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay. So then, uh, well, oops, create another new object. Oh, I didn't need to create the object. Oh, well, I forgot I did that already. And so I need the, uh, what do I need here? I need my stick figure guy. Uses this. And what I'm gonna do here in the create event, I'm going to add a create event. And I'm going to give this guy a speed. Not animation speed, set speed. And I'm just going to say, oh, okay, Let's give him a horizontal speed of two. And so he's going to go to the right at a speed of two. And by setting this in the create event, I only have to do it one time. And then the game will automate and walk and move him two pixels per frame every frame for me automatically. There's my stick figure guy, and then uh, my other one was the uh, just my uh, shrink guy, the shrinked thing. Let's go ahead and pop that in my awesome shrinked sprite. Let's put that in the room. So here's I can just put a few of the stick figure guys in here. They're gonna look funny. They're gonna walk all over everything, but that's cool. And then my shrinked sprite. Oops, I meant to put that in the room. Click shrink. And so this will go over everything. And now I run this. Watch your eyes. I don't know what it's going to look like. So there you go. And now everybody's doing their thing. The, the people are all walking. The shrink sprite is shrinking. And now the final thing left to do is just play with the tile set. And we can call it a day here. So I can say, uh, let's add it. To do this, we, can, we have to add a tile layer. This 
the tiles aren't objects per se. They're a whole different thing. Let's see, let me find new, yep, create new tile layer. Just call it tiles instead of tiles one. And then in here you go, well, what tile set do I want to use? I want to use tile set one. I don't know, how did, it, how did that get named tile set one? I'm not sure. Let me see about this in here. Uh, in my tiles. Oh, I just called it tile set one. I'm, I meant to. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, you can rename that if you want to uh, fantasy. Oops, fantasy. Fantasy. Uh, fantasy tile set or something like that. So, it definitely has a better name. Let me go back into my room here. There's my tile set. And now you can see over here all the tiles. And notice, remember what I said earlier, that first image is replaced by like a clear. Just a completely empty sprite that's just the way it goes and then now I just click on something and I can just you know click on it and it's gonna be you know they're not giant sprites by any means but you can see that all I'm doing is clicking copy pasting and again this is not these aren't objects these are being drawn on top there's no collision detection they're just it's just basically drawing these things for us and this is you know just putting them in the room like oh here's some trees look at the cute little trees and and whatever and oh, maybe it's dark oh no it's just that's nighttime tree I don't want a nighttime tree give me a break there and you, you kind of you get the point a lot of times in a lot of games the the graphics are drawn on top of a really boring just grid system and you'll see if you ever watch any of my other videos and the stuff I do that the game itself all the you know all that the walls and all that stuff are just white boxes and then things get drawn on top of it the the end user has no idea the facade that's living underneath the nice cute graphical layer and so that that pretty much covers everything i don't think i missed putting anything in you know again i'm not the goal of this is not to make anything pretty the goal of this is just to kind of get acclimated especially if you've never used game maker studio before and even for those of you who have, things might have been updated over the years since the last time you used it or the, or the months or whatever because they are, you know, this is becoming a more and more professional tool every day. Definitely has come a long way since 2005 or 2006 was when the first time I ever used Game Maker back in the way old days. So as always, if you have any questions or if you know better ways to do any of the things I've done, please comment below or send me an email at swordb at cod.edu and I'll get back to you and I will thank you for all your hard work and your understanding that my art skills are cool. So uh, moving on to bigger and better things with Game Maker, please watch my other videos as we move forward. And, uh, I'd, if you, and again, if you have any projects you'd love me to try to do, I'll have some time to maybe bang it out and see what I can do for you and uh, give you some hints on how to make these things work. So as always, thanks for sticking it out with me. Have a great day, everybody. See you next time.